All right. Do we have sound and all these other strange things that we need? You know, general life connection. <sighs> Outstanding. All right. So now I'm going to try to make sure that everybody is somewhat here. Uh, <laughs> well, I always said I need to have a an assistant or a horse that's way smarter than me. And I am just uh, trying to catch everybody up and post this on YouTube so everyone can see where we are and what we're doing. Um, mm -hmm. I am also trying to do this for the first time on uh, on Patreon. And I've never done that before, so right now I'm seeing myself in stereo with a delay. That's not schizophrenic at all. All right, I see some of the faces I know. Actually, I don't know any of your faces. Terrible, terrible. Um, <laughs> the link I sent on the uh, on the live stream will actually let 10 of you log in and join. Uh, although I see a lot of, this is interesting. Um, I want to do this on the, um, on, a, on a, a mutual chat format one of these days where we can all sort of join in. Uh, so I guess I'll just send, you know, um, web cameras to everybody. I hope you're all enjoying watching me screw up technolo technology. See, sorry, I can't even say technology. I'm a horrible person in the morning without enough coffee. I'm just trying to jump on my Patreon guys here as well. I just want to see if that works so we have a safe place where we can all hide. <laughs> um, I'm not even trying to be play it safe anymore, am I? Uh, show me where to find the link. Okay, this is what I'm looking for on YouTube. I am just trying something. And then we'll see if that works. Okay. Set my live stream account. Oh, I need somebody who's a lot smarter than me to join me in this strange endeavor, you know, technology. And they want, I, I saw Joseph chat yesterday um, about the dangers of cryptocurrency and making everything digital. You all realize that if they take cash away, <laughs> I, I will clearly not be able to eat ever. Since I won't be able to operate it. All right. So, okay. There's a live stream with some delay on Patreon as well. Don't know if it's posted. If anyone on pastry, pastry on. These are taking one of these text. I want this to publish. Publish now. All right. Until Lucy goes out. Yeah. Uh, no. All right. So, oi, it is Friday morning, isn't it? Like I always said, bite me. I don't always say that, but I do. Well, I wanted to reset the, um, the microphone and by doing that, I left the live stream and apparently you can't reactivate an old live stream. So that's where things always go wrong. Um, uh, on the page on Patreon, I, cr I created a new live stream and posted it. It says it's posted uh, and said it's pu published as well for Patreon only. Um, just just checking, trying to find us a little safe space. All right, so I have that. I have this. Published now. All right. So, if you are on my Patreon, any of you guys, and you can actually see this and it works, just uh, let me know. So I don't have to look at three different screens because Lord knows, living in LA, I'm paranoid enough. Right. Um, and what a week! <laughs> and what a week it's been. Um, so. You know, I, I need to get back to Denmark. I need I need I need to go home. All right. So that we have 
we were audio outstanding and we had three different cameras and somebody sent me a mail. That's got to wait. Hey, Sweden. Um, so where did we start off last time? I came in on the uh, on this chat you guys were having and I saw the term broad denote um, female gender. I haven't heard that word for such a long time. I just feel we woke up into a Bogart movie. I don't know. Can can we use the term broad, or will someone take offense? Um, I mean, I'm 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 kind of I'm kind of good with bringing old ter terminology back from back in the day. I, I think somehow language was a little cooler back then. They're good, outstanding. I am alive. Lisa must. Be. Hey, <laughs> no, no, no. It's you that's young. That's completely different, lady. Um. I am I am trying to escape here from um, from LA fairly soon. <coughs> if I <clears throat> I don't even smoke much cigars. I mean the term broad did it start in the UK or we're we back to broad again. Did it start in the UK or did it start in the US? I mean I've all heard uh, Bogard use the term broads and I mean, it is an old term. Uh, it, it is, but it, it, is it derogatory or is it just an old term that have turned derogatory? I don't know. <clears throat> um, Snake Plissken. Did he... <laughs> I don't think he used the term broad. Um, Canada? <clears throat> American... It, I mean, I, I would think it most English words at some point in time uh, originated, obviously, in England, and then they migrated to America, and then we put a lot of fake cheese on them and turned them into something else. <coughs> Don't worry, I'm not dying. It's got something in my uh, throat here. I think it's a, I think it's a U.S. thing. I could see it as a U.S. thing, but I don't know if about British movies, World War Two. I think it must be post World War Two. Because I don't, I somehow don't see the lingo of the World War II generation using that particular term. Um, well, that's true. Yeah. Um, well, so we just have to go back and start using words that are so old that none of the young generation knows what they means. <coughs> Damn. It's dusty out here. Damn squirrels. Oh, <clears throat> yes, just, anyway, where were we? Um, this was a bit of a week. Um, the week started for me, Monday, by going to my dentist. And that's funny. Because, you know, you know, when you're about to go to the dentist, you are always considering the chance that you might actually rather admit to, I don't know, having killed Kennedy or start a World War Three or something. <clears throat> So when I sit in the chair, uh, the first thing the little lady does after I open my mouth is say, oh my God, are you in pain? After which I realize this is going to be really painful and really expensive. So next week I'm, I'm paddling down the wonderful road of Root Canal and New Crown. Yay! Although I don't know how much talking I'll get to be doing, which I'm sure... Nieder Österreich? Hallo Österreich? Servus. Um... Yeah, that's what then the next thing. So looking forward to Root Canal and then YouTube did the wonderful demonetizing things. Uh, this time citing that I was uh, re-uploading my, um, my content, which is sort of ridiculous since I have a lot of it. But I did, I, I, I'm thinking, they never really explain to you what it is they claim you did. They just generalize. The problem is the computers flag a lot of things. And then there's no one to clean up. Uh, afterwards, there's no recourse. Sometimes I, I remember before I ever started this three, four years ago, I was demonetized for six months and I never found out why. And when I asked them why, they told me it was classified. So maybe YouTube or the NSA. Anyway, I got it sorted this time. I, I just appeal to complain, so this is not right. And they listen, so now we're sort of back on track on that until the next time or the next time. Because if you don't know what you're doing wrong, you can't undo it. And I really try to play ball with them. So it that that's the problem with the with the algorithm is 
the computer will flag things and then there will be no human being to fix it. I still have a community strike on YouTube from a year and a half ago that I have no idea where it's from. But remember, Facebook, after my mom passed, I posted some photos of her. One of them was from the 60s when she was riding side saddle on a motorcycle uh, with a foreign legionnaire. And this was this was my mom in a, in a dress, sitting side saddle on a motorcycle, black and white photo. And Facebook deleted it for being pornography. <sighs> At that point, you can't really argue anymore. So we are here, and the Patreon is backing up everything. And, um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, I mean, it, that's why there, there's no rhyme or reason to what the, what the algorithm is. And I would like to actually talk to them and try to give, figure out what it is. I, I, I asked them once in, at YouTube what, what it was. They, what specifically, I wrote them, what do, what would you take object to? What, what do you not want to see? What, what is it you, you, uh, you would like people to stay clear of? They couldn't tell you. So if they can't give you guidance as to what they don't want to see, well, then it really, really is hard to try to follow whatever rules. So, but anyway, uh, we're here and that's more. Yeah, they, they, they don't. And uh, it is kind of funny. I mean, not funny. Why is that picture double on my poster on that thing? Huh. We're back to the search for graphic artists and people who understand computers. I know. Um, you know, like freedom. Uh, oopsie daisy. I'm no longer putting commercials on the chats because let's not anger. Let's not anger the man, man. Um, I spent all these times in a, in a gray dull suit. I, I thought I was being accused. I was being the man, man, who was oppressing all the others, man. Now I guess I'm being oppressed by the man. <laughs> Hell no. Anyway, um, dear YouTube, I'm paying for it uh, by having a root canal next week just for you. Thank you. And popcorn. Thank you, Leslie, for suggesting I try those, fucker. Um, hey, Ohio. Uh, I was just chatting to my friend out there. Um, library. Th there are. Okay, there's, there's the problem with changing into a different into a different format or different uh, uh, site is you have to move everything over. You have to start to establish that one. And there are so many of them. Everybody's, and that's the thing with YouTube, everybody knows uh, YouTube. Google is worse. Um, Google, Google really do mess with people. And uh, you know how you always are told to save things onto a cloud. Don't save anything onto a cloud because it is not in your physical um, reach. You can't get to it. Save things on a damn hard drive uh, and then back that up. Oh my, ever since I started making movies, everything is, I have a house and stores full of hard drives because I have everything <clears throat> when we went from, from film to digital. And every, every show, every show, every episode, everything is backed up on several hard drives that's in the fire safe and in another place as well. So, and no one can take that. They can lock your cloud. They can steal your cloud. They can do all these things when it gets away from you. And that's why digital currency and that the whole trend towards lack of, of, of taking cash away is so terrifying because you're right. It, it's, it's a control thing. And, um, <sighs> I wouldn't even trust a server. I, I trust it's safe because it's protected by Smith & Weston. Surpri by the way, I'm surprised that um, that they issued in, in uh, Belgium that they issued Glocks to uh, the military police. I thought they would go with, well, Heckland Koch or something, local European. Um, but yes, I mean, gradually now I'm backing everything up to my paid server on uh, everything on Patreon runs over a Vimeo, which you pay for. And you can only upload a few every week. So everything is going to be copied over there. And also gives me a chance to sort of upgrade everything. So if everything goes Tango Uniform, it'll be there at least. Yeah, those are platforms people know. And the same thing, the same thing problem with YouTube, everybody knows it. So we can all meet here and we can uh, encourage new people to join our quest in history. And they'll go there as opposed to the 10 other up and coming sites um 
sooner or later. I mean, when when there's enough of us and we actually I can set up servers and all that, then we can just do a website where people can, or can join, or we can join some I, time ghost army that I haven't even visited, but I I hear enough that they have some things going on in that sense. And there's there's history channels that are digital that would be something to work with. But again, um, yeah, I, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, of course they are. I just never was a Glock fan. Um, but it just seems Glock is such a thing that ev everyone in America has a Glock. And to me, it is, it's not the most accurate thing. And it's not the most reliable thing. But I am comparing to back when I got my firearms certificate, uh, instructor certificate, like 15 years ago. I was 12 at the time, okay? I just go with it. Um, so, and that, obviously, they, they've gotten better. And they are, they're cheaper, and there's options. So, I, I, would, con I would consider get, getting one, but I, I like my Smith & Wesson and my Luger. Um, Engraving and printing in the six months behind printing money. <laughs> well, maybe that's why they want to go to digital currency, because it's just, they don't have, have time to, to print enough cash. Uh, Glock 365. Um, you know, I I had a Beretta, uh, and uh, the original 92F that everybody was issued. It's just too bulky. Um, I I don't know, but Beretta was never never a thing. Um, for me, I just don't 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 grip it well. Uh, I like I even like the the four old 45 better, except it's a heavy piece of metal. Um. Like I said, I was never a fan of the Glock and of the Beretta, so I sort of steered away from both of them. And uh, I, I, I like the Smith and Wesson series. Both the forty, I have both the forty-five and the nine. They're they're light, they're part composite, and I find that they're they're fairly accurate. But again, for accuracy, well, I mean, you get you become accurate with anything you you shoot enough with. So. Um, Sig, Sig, I, I carry Sig. I, I do, Sig, I do like. Um, the F2000, I heard something about that, and uh, it's the one with that weird ass ammo, I believe, right? Um, we, you know, we, we're compartmentalizing here, talking a lot about fire. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I was saying. <laughs> I don't know how we tracked over into into uh, talking about uh, tools of the trade here. So uh, let me give you guys some um, some gossip, and we can do we can uh, we can do we can do the the gun exchange chat on uh, on a Patreon separate. Um, I'm going to the I'm going to the range uh, for our shows because there's some gossips and theories that's come up over you know military history. That I want to test. For instance, if we all heard the story about how somebody would be able to fire a bullet straight down the barrel of a tank and, um, and blow it up by hitting the projectile or blocking the barrel. And I am, I'm going to try. I want to try that. I want to see if I can set up a charge by firing something through a barrel. But that's going to be that's going to be for one of the Q and A episodes. So trying something fun. Uh, back to what I wanted to to tell you guys about, I had a chat with one of the German, um, and this is really, really interesting, um, one of the German historians that are spending a lot of time uh, researching the ground out there, and, and she has not published her findings yet because she wants to do it. Or everybody, and I, I get it, if you're a historian and you're onto something, you want to be the one to have the press conference where he said this this is what I found this is where I found it I found it and and uh, here it is and I I'm love to follow some of these guys because they spend a lot more time because they're closer out to it and when some of these announcements will be made we may discover that the evolution the, the America rocket the a9 10 was tested and we may find that Fiebinger, who was building for Kamla in the underground, who ended up building rock, rock, missile silos over here in America, 
there's a reason why they brought him to America because he did the same thing in uh, in Germany and had actually built some for something far bigger than the V2. So, yes, uh, you would be correct. And uh, there, there are people who are doing the parallel research that's backing up what she's finding is actually true. And I'm really glad you brought her up because um, we had a first a chance to, to chat for the first time this week and I really enjoyed that. A lot of really, really interesting um, uh, findings and research she's doing. So um, I'm looking forward to meeting with her and some of the others out there when I get there. And uh, also there's, I had a long chat with Thomas Urich. I'm guessing, uh, welcome back. I'm guessing you probably, since you're here, uh, saw the episode from Poland with uh, Thomas Urich where we went around um, the, 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 the castle and we looked at what was uh, what he suspects it was a nuclear reactor that I compared to the one in, in, uh, in Kotov and there's another one that I have not um, um, yep that I haven't published yet because I haven't gotten to it and I was this week I was trying to figure out if I was shifting channels or I was coming back or what I was doing new episode coming up tomorrow uh, no the Polish guy uh, this was, when did I pop it? Last Friday, uh, with the yellow nuclear thing. <clears throat> I talked about him last year in an episode, and I really wanted to go meet with him and, and hear what his research was. And he has some really, he had a lot of findings. And he was talking about how there was huge SS research installations and factories going on around the towns of the castle and uh, how the postal law, the postal service, yeah, the Polish dude. <clears throat> I, I, I really don't want to narrate when people are talking. When I do interviews, whether in German or Polish or, um, oh, uh, Crystal Falken wrote, I think 11 books so far. <clears throat> and I really hope uh, we can work together and get her uh, published in English. Uh, yes, the Polish general Olbrecht will no longer have me murdered. And I did offer beer and cigars for when I come out there. I'm very much looking forward to meeting him. We almost crossed paths in 99 when I was assigned to the uh, Sherbik stand Standby High Readiness Brigade that was supposed to move up to the with a US, UN peacekeeping mission that was supposed to climb the mountains uh, between Israel and Lebanon. And we got called up for that because he was in charge of the previous UN mission from what I can read on his resume. So we almost crossed paths. And um, so I'm really looking forward to meeting him because he was in the uh, there in the castle in the 70s when the Polish army did the uh, cleanup effort there. And that's also why I wanted to uh, he, and he does speak English because he was actually assigned out here. Um, out here, I think it was in Florida, was some with a military mission for a while. I forget his resume, but now I certainly know who he was. And um, and I wrote I wrote him, and I wrote with Alex, and I'm going to go back. I'm trying to. Uh, hopefully, I I can go back in October. I really need to go to Denmark and eat something. Um, you know, sometimes you just need to go home. And um, I'm hoping I'm going out there and meet with with, uh, with Thomas again, because there's a lot of really interesting research you've done. And I think it's really interesting that I love the fact that the German Postal Service during World War II had its own nuclear program. I mean, it's still funny. Um, it just makes, makes the whole concept of going postal something completely different. Um, yes, you're right. Um, and another interesting part about that LP is that you did not have to be in just because you were SS doesn't mean that you were a Nazi, which is takes a little bit more explanation sometimes. Um, they, they were actually quite a, a lot at odds with each other, the SS and the Nazi party, which was interesting. Um, 
going postal was back some 20 years when postal workers decided to bring automatic weapons to work and shoot everybody up and therefore the term going postal. So going postal in Germany in 1944 was something completely different involving nuclear research and weapons. Um, but there were some of the postal employees that for the German nuclear research program that was seconded to the SS where they uh, installed several cyclotrons for them. So they all worked together and it really puts together some very large pieces and uh, it really it opens up a picture of a much more collaborative effort because if the SS and the army and the postal service were working together and it's still funny to think about the postal service as a nuclear a nuclear player uh maybe I, that may help delivery on uh, some of our mail here but it really does open up for well if they they those entities work together and that was the the other thing is we always said that hitler would have used a nuclear weapon i am i was told recently haven't seen the papers yet that uh, kamala deliberately didn't tell him that the nuclear weapon was ready because they didn't want hitler to go off half cocked and use it because everybody knew what the ramifications would be if he did and now if if we take all the all the the various uh, injectables that hitler was was taken towards the end of the war and the subsequent mental state he was not a, he was not a crazy or a stupid per well i don't know crazy he was not a dumb person he was not an unintelligent person he wouldn't get where he was if he had been so he too, if he had a fair state of mind, would have seen the writing of the wall. And whether he would or wouldn't, I, I, I don't know. Maybe he, well, we always know about the, the Nero decree and that, that's something that would, it shows a state of mind. But either way, Kamla was smart enough to know that at, towards, at, towards the end of the war in, in, in April and March, there's no reason to use nuclear weapons you're surrounded there it's they're going to lose the war regardless so using a nuclear weapon would just piss everybody off and it would be a good bargaining chip so it makes sense that he withheld that information but also i'm under the impression they tested them they made them work they started producing them and then the war ended so but of course if they actually went to the i think kamala went to america I actually have a possible grave site. Oh, I do. Hmm. Now, should I tell you? Um, I don't know why I'm sitting in a ray of light here. Hang on. <sighs> Unless it's a halo. <laughs> like I will be issued one of those. Right. Um, two things. Uh, yeah, the Americans didn't have the bomb in March. That's what the Germany tested one before, so I can see why they didn't want to talk about it. And I, I am as convinced as I can be at this point that, that Germany did test uh, one or two uh, nuclear weapons. I think Kamala went to America, and I actually have a grave site uh, indicating that with a different name, where I, if I can find an, a grave with that name here in the state where it's supposed to be, well, well, then he went here, but Thomas always had some very, uh, he had a very, we had a long conversation where he was telling me that, uh, I'm trying to figure, it, it's really not that interesting that I filmed it so I could remember it. Um, not that interesting to show you guys, uh, three people having a conversation over poor Schnitzel, but Kamla seemed to have visited Czechoslovakia in the late 50s or early 60s I don't I forgot the year because it's been a while and apparently uh, Kamla had another child with a woman not far from the castle what I've been told uh, signatures exist on paperwork that he filled out in the 50s or 60s whichever it was uh, with a bank to transfer some assets and holdings and some legal papers to transfer to his son there. I 
I haven't done the episode yet, so I haven't gone there yet. And independently of, this was Thomas Urich who told me that, but independently there was a Czech researcher who I believe is passed now, can't remember his name, sorry. He uh, has published some of the uh, the documents with Kamala's signature, so I have them as well, or at least have a picture of them. So. Several people independently of each other uh, seem to have indicated that he was alive and he was able to travel the borders during the Cold War, which made it even more interesting. Um, but we're back to uh, the, the seismic uh, stations. I don't know what you guys all make out of that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, is Microsoft Word? I don't know. Google Intelligence. I think there's a lot of that. Anyway, I uh, got sidetracked. What do you make of the school tobacco? I'm going to do documentaries on the school tobacco while they want to or not. I have several episodes from um, Czechoslovakia with a leading uh, Czech aeronautical uh, historian. And uh, we, who has access to all the archives out there, so I'm also going to go visit Himmler's archives and check, yeah. Um, because I know some of his archives, his uh, books, his some of his library is in the uh, National Archive out there. Uh, don't have a cold. Um, I was working all day yesterday in a room with a lot of air condition, and I just don't like air condition. And I just woke up, and my coffee's not working. Enough excuses. And so a lot of somewhere in that triangle uh, between Czechoslovakia and Larisa where the castle is and uh, Linz and up where Bergkristall, that's where things really happened. But if they tested the America rocket, then they must have put it together. They must have built it somewhere. They must have had the machinery to do so or even the machinery to. Here's the thing. They were going to build it in um, in uh, in the cement tunnels, and they didn't. They pulled out of that, but it's not like the the plan stopped. So where did they go? <clears throat> they must have gone somewhere else with with all that technology, all that machinery that they were they were planning ahead. So where did they go? Maybe they, that's what they were building in the underground in Jonastal. That's the indication. Because if you had an, a rocket like the American rocket at the time that could reach America and fly that far, it really wouldn't matter. You'd have to be the coast where you fired it from. You could do it from central Germany. And there's some indication they built uh, rocket launchers underground. And they would have constructed the rockets fairly close to that. And you had all of the German aeronautical industry in Jonas Tell as well. So, and I, I, so the machinery is somewhere and they couldn't have taken it with us. So even with them, although a lot of machinery was found by the Americans as well, tons of crates and <laughs> Steve, what the hell are you doing here? Funny you should mention, everybody say hi to Steve Effler. We've done a bunch of movies together, and he's currently building my, um, why are you here? Should you not be building my guest house in Tennessee? Um, we are very longtime friends, and um, he he's, uh, he's doing his very best to teach the future generation uh, history. I, I laugh at that. I, I know they're not listening, um, but it's time. All right, now we're going to go back on track. Uh, anyway, if they sealed it all up, like uh, Himmler's uh, Agent Kortmann, he said, that they had all of these previous existing tunnels and caves, there would be plenty of places to hide these things or having, or having expanded them and had the underground production there. So... Now the question is, um, if you if you guys saw, Steve was in Brothers of War with me, and we did the other uh, what, what uh, uh, Red Rose, where 
Let me see. Well, yeah, we're, we're walking to, to the hospital together. He's the one that hands me the medal. Uh, lots of jokes in there. And um, I told him I want a bunker <laughs> with a patio and a fountain with a unicorn or two unicorns. I want a unicorn fountain, Steve, and I want them to shoot water out of their nipples. So. What audit? Um, what audit? I missed. I must have missed one there. Oh, um, connection to the Vatican. Oh yes, uh, there's lots of cooperation between the uh, the, the Nazis and uh, and the Vatican, especially after uh, after the war, where the Vatican most certainly helped a lot of uh, wanted war criminals to escape. So that that's. So, uh, what is it, uh, Archbishop Hudal? I believe that was his name. Um, so, yeah, absolutely, there, there, there's, that most certainly did happen. And, the, yeah, the, they had the rat line. Plus, I, I, I keep thinking, the high, I, I keep wondering why Himmler would be caught up where he was. Um, all right, sidelining. It's always, I was, I go paddle out in a direction and someone will say something and I'll change direction. Um, Himmler, towards the end of the war, found a deep interest in understanding that there was a ton of underground caverns and tunnels under a lot of large cities, uh, including Vienna, uh, Warsaw. Um, there's a lot of them. So, and that would be places. He was looking also from way before he was looking underground for some of the ancient civilizations that could have resided there with the Ananaba, which were the archaeologists for uh, for those working for him. And play, of course, by investigating cave caves, tunnels, underground, the worlds underground in general, would lead to a place where you can stake war production. So now we don't, uh, not only do we put up at certain, yes, places I want to go see, um, Brian, you don't get back on your chair. So now you can look at what Kamla built that they had construction in as one, but you also have to look at what was existing before the war, not only mines, but the underground in general, things could be moved in there. So we have a large uh, bit of territory to find and hopefully people with um, GPRs will be able to help us with that. You know, I haven't been to Budapest. Uh, I would like to go. I, I drove through once, which doesn't really do much. Um, but yeah, we're back to like, why did, I know Himmler, he thought he, he thought he could have made a deal. He couldn't make a deal with his new government. He was losing power and influence, but I think that was a surprise to him. The last couple of weeks before Himmler was caught, yes, was probably chaotic and somewhat improvised in, oh crap, the war's ending, we need to do something, I'm losing my power base and my people, get it. But before that, they all knew they were losing the war months in advance. They must have made plans for themselves. Um, and that's why I'm surprised that he was caught up where he was Certain, and I will never uh, believe that, that that Bormann was caught in Berlin and found where he was found. And that's the whole thing. The the Germans, the new German government on the Dunes wasn't interested in working with, with Himmler. Certainly not as far as we've been told. I don't know what relationship Dunes and Himmler had, but I could see why the regular army and a new government, they were trying to, well, we have to marginalize us from the SS and pin everything on them. Remember what I said after in 43 when uh, the memo went out that we are going to blame all the dead people. So Heidrich has gotten blamed, he probably deservingly so, because he, he very much was the, uh, the architect behind a lot of bad things. Um, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I saw something that I wanted to reread. I'm trying to, trying to be polite and look at you when I'm talking to you and have another eye on, on the chat. Um, I think a lot of Germans went down to work with Israelis uh, after all. 
Yep. The America rocket would take a very tall building or a very deep shaft. Like an underground missile silo. Like the ones that we were building after the war here. Like the one Kamala's architect, Fiebinger, came over here to build and our advise on. He didn't get that idea from nowhere, so it would make sense that Fiebinger was no knew something about how to build underground missile silos from his experience during the war. And of, of that is what I think we might be looking for. Um, uh, I would think the way Heimler's war was taken. No, um, you're talking about Sked, you're talking about Himmler. And no, it, it, I could see him being caught by accident, trying to get away after all his plans had sort of gone sideways. The problem is, why did he get to be in a position where that could happen for one? And why did he not have a better, bigger plan? Uh, he had the one was in position. He should have known. He must have had communication with Allied intelligence, even if Churchill didn't want to talk to him. Which he well, he sent a letter to Churchill. Um. Eh, well, hey, hey, hey. Um. I can cook and clean and watch TV at the same time, and um. It, it it's just surprising that there are people who were in the know that just did not seem to have a plan towards the end. And uh, maybe an indication of that is that they thought they had a deal. They thought they had a better plan leading up to the end of the war. They didn't think they were going to be wanted until uh, they started realizing they really had a problem. And then it was too late to come up with, with an, an, or activate an escape plan. Like with Carlton Boyner, who was sitting in uh, in a little little hut somewhere up in Austria as well. A lot of them went to Austria, went to Ebensee, went to the small towns up there. Those uh, those places were just crowded with uh, refugees, uh, German German allies, uh, towards the end of the war. And yeah, that that's what I'm thinking. The letter that Himmler sent to Churchill, to in in the letter weeks of months of the war has never been seen and one would think that uh, yes Himmler would would be reaching out but uh, accordingly uh, Churchill burned it it doesn't mean there's no there's no copies of it to be found which there probably should be uh, well we have Now, I heard Von Braun was complaining that he didn't know when he was moving to NASA, he would be working for the uh, same people that he was working for during the war. Mm. <sighs> uh, I have not gone to the archives in London yet. Uh, and apparently the ones in Washington, all the archives are kind of hard to get to because appointments are so scarce. They're way backlogged, and well, we'll we'll get there. I really want to get to the Russian archives, and I've been been talking to several people about that possibility. Um, <laughs> uh, von Braun's brother was the uh, he was yeah, he was interesting because he was a um, a diplomat, and there's from I seem to remember. Uh, along with the uh, Weisnacher, where they could possibly be, have been the link because they went to, uh, I think they went to Zurich, I think they went to Switzerland. They went to where places where Dulles was, uh, and they could have been a link. And question, well, did Kamla have his, uh, Kamla would have have his own intelligence link to communicate with an American or British intelligence. I don't know if Von Braun was doing a parallel deal or he and Kamala jointly were doing trying to do a deal but a deal was done because everything was evacuated out of the path of the Russians and handed over to the Americans and even uh, von Braun and uh, Dornberger they took all their papers after they and 600 others were evacuated from uh, Pina Munda by Kamala by order of Kamala towards the end of the war and hid everything in a cave 
uh, for several days until they were certain that the Americans actually had an honest deal. So there was a lot of distrust towards the end as well. Surprise. Um, yeah, we all we all kind of do. The octopus. All right, you're starting to write in code. Is that because my coffee is no longer working? But I think the Russians found more uh, than they've let on. I mean, after all, the the Russians found everything they needed to start their new reactor at Oranienburg, and they got a lot of the postal service uh, scientists, and it's through them that we know that they set up um, cyclotrons down in Lower Silesia, because that was testimony to uh, Froilov. So that's not, that's not how his name is pronounced. Um, it's interesting when you talk about war crimes and justice and the future world, well, justice, and um, it all turns into the same thing as in Hollywood and politics and the world today. It all depends on who you know and what you know. Justice for the victims always seem to take a back step from uh, a today's pragmatism. Basically, a lot of the war criminals uh, who did things a year ago, a year, be, a year before the end of the war, a year after the war was over, well, now they were needed for roughly the same skill set, just in a different world. So, it's it's the victims of World War II is a, is a very interesting conversation because they really only figure as numbers. And obviously, we were trying to bring them out as, as, as people and put faces on them and but when it comes down to the global politics of the post-war world, they were only just, uh, they, they really were what, what, what Lenin said, uh, a statistic. And that is, that is really, really, uh, that's a terrible thing, but it's not any different than what's going on today, where most governments, they take a pragmatic view at post enemies. If we can work with them, oh, well, well, I guess we'll forgive them for what they did. And, um, it's, it's, I, I understand it. Uh, I, I think I would understand it less if I had been one of the victims or families. But then again, you could also see a lot of those victims, the ones who were in the position they were, had been sold out before the war or neglected or not deliberately not helped by everyone. Um, when they were trying to escape, nobody would, would, would take a lot of them or any of them. Uh, so it's a little bit of hypocritical if you refuse, if you if your neighbor's house is burning and you refuse to help him and then it collapses and kills him. Is aren't you a little bit to blame for his death? Uh, just it's it's a strange analogy, but Let's go with it because the only one I got on the except acceptable losses and acceptable losses. That's the name of the of the book on the uh, on the American fields, and that's definitely a conversation I would love to have with some more. And that's one of the reasons why we can do eventually, providing this all works, we'll do live streams and chats on uh, on Patreon where we can actually just talk freely. But I do still run through YouTube, so, well, it doesn't have to. Um, there's some chat software that I want to test. I just found out that uh, it was not compatible with a Patreon, maybe. But we all know that when it comes to technology, I'm an idiot. So it'll take much more research for me than from anyone else. Um, exactly. So where are we? Um, but anyway, it, it, it is interesting. There's, uh, with Alex, um, it, and I, I filmed it as much as, as much as possible, he found some really interesting things with his uh, GPR and his LiDAR uh, out there. And this is where I, I'll, I'll give you an indication of what he found in, in, in the episodes that's coming up. But there's some really weird 
markings on the ground around the castle and in, in Cilicia in general. And this is to the point where I'm thinking maybe it's it's time to start taking classes in, in uh, LiDAR and GPR and get something. Um, no, no, I just suffer from melancholy. Symptoms is deep-rooted sarcasm. <laughs> Um, and we do go back to that place, and that does not get any less strange. Um, yes, of course I do. Um, I, I need a teenager who knows everything about technology. Um, the markings are really... Okay, in... in I, I have pictures, and at some point in time, I'll link you to Alex's research page so you can... Uh, because he can explain it forever, and he did, and I still don't understand it. The best comparison I will say is it looks like if you go up and look from a bird's eye view, it looks like runes carved in the ground. Uh, and when you're on the ground, you clearly see the grooves, you clearly see the markings, um, and if you are just centralized standing on top of one of them, and you and you're just thinking off the top of your head, um, I know, you would think it's irrigation system, but there's nothing there to irrigate. There's no farms, there's no fields, there's nowhere for the water to come from. It doesn't make sense. And so all these grooves in the ground, about a meter deep, and they hundreds of meters in different directions, so you can see them from way above, and they look like runes. They look like different symbols, and some of them just, they, parallel lines that definitely man-made and they are some of them are within the spirit beat you know you had the castle and then you had the spirit beat and within there are some of them and some of them are also past it so uh, it's one of those things it is really really weird when you go to Lois Alicia because it there on there are so many things that doesn't make sense and the next two the next two episodes from there we're literally crawling through nature because alex wanted to show me things that are not where they're supposed to be or well actually there are things where they're not supposed to be way out in forests there are drainage tunnels there are underground accesses and then some of them are, of course they're filled with water if they're eventually blocked up there were old germans that uh, old ss men that was left behind that lived there in the areas for the rest of their lives seemingly watching over some of these sites and there's now this is where it gets where there's a lot of gossip and a lot of rumors and a lot of made up BS and there is and there's fake documents and there's there's a lot of all of this a lot of obfuscation and a lot of counter uh, counterintelligence, I guess you can say. There there are people who deliberately have uh, spread false information about these areas for decades after the war, which will lead you in all sorts of different directions, which is why I always try to just focus on what is on or under the ground. What can I see? Because there, there, there are... There, Something is really weird out there, and there's got to be a reason why, a reason, yes, uh, why so many people uh, have come together in that little area looking for something very specific. And there's some, something is going on there that is not really documented by the history books. And there's a reason why so much disinformation is being spread and emanates from one little area. Come on, every, everywhere, you, you could have that everywhere. Uh, you go to Jonastal or you go to Bekhastal. There's not really that many rumors or gossip. Something happened there. We know something happened there. Some of we don't know what the extent of what it was, but there's no gossip. There's no rumors. There's just, there's just silence, which is one thing. Out in Lower Cilicia, where you also had, you had an exchange of population in the whole area of the Risa, where a lot of locals were driven out um, by the Russians and by the Polish. 
at the end of the war, a lot of them fled. And some of them remained uh, of, of the German population as it became Poland. But there was a constant influx of new people who had no idea what any of this was. So you had a few of the those who remained who always been there. But this has been Germany for, for quite a long time. So and it was their home then. Some decided to stay. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the fires. Um, a lot of this. Yeah, uh, I I know a few things because we always get on put on standby whenever there's fires, and the fires in Oregon leading up to the um, the election, they were set. And I knew people who were up there um, with scopes and guns protecting the forest, looking at these people who were doing it and, and trying to stop them. So a lot of the things that happen, like I always said, um, does a few things. If you have a document, you need to ask yourself, why does this document exist? Where does it come from? Uh, why did somebody write it? Uh, if it's an original document, you can test the paper, see if it's from the proper time. But again, why does this document exist? Does it exist uh, to tell you something or does it exist because it transmits information from somebody contemporary, somebody else contemporary? And it's a little bit the same thing with the news. Why does something happen? Why does a news story happen? Who is benefiting ultimately from this that happened? If somebody, if, if you always have to look beyond the fire or beyond the event because usually the causes uh, lies closer to who is ultimately benefiting from whatever that event was some steps down the line. And that's why we really need to disseminate both our history and our current information, news, and whatever coverage we're getting, you have to take a step backwards, stop being fascinated by the loud fire and start looking at what caused it, which is usually opposite. Um, when you, for years and years, see a certain group of people being blamed for something, uh, it's many times it turned out that it is actually the people doing the blaming that did it. Um, you saw the same thing with the burning of the Reichstag in Berlin in 30, 33 or 34. Did the Reichstag burn in 33 or 34? Remind me. Um, it doesn't matter if this part. Every, the, the press of the time immediately blamed it on Hitler, social and national socialists, and the Nazis did it. They burned it down themselves so they could create a state of emergency and do whatever they wanted. However, if you read the Goebbels diaries, any of the uh, diaries or statements from any of the people around Hitler, he had no idea. Hitler had no idea this was coming. Goering didn't know this was coming. Goebbels didn't know this was coming. And Himmler didn't know this was coming. Himmler was preparing for his annual parade. That's why they were all in Berlin. This was the annual SS graduation parade, 33, thank you. Um, and, the media, and the press immediately said the Nazis did it. And that's the narrative that stood for decades because well okay in this case i guess they did benefit from it in case they, they they took executive powers um but again it was done by a sorry, dutch socialist uh who, who who did it uh but if the top four nazis in the regime doesn't know well then it's certainly not an organized uh, or in sanctioned event um and that's what we were, we were, please explain more. All right, now we're back to Daniel. What am I missing? We didn't do it. <laughs> uh, spot on, follow the move. All right. Let's be... Hang on. I guess I miss, I'm missing something. That's what happens when I sometimes talk. Uh, Germans protected the area after World War II. The units and success of them may have been. Well, all right, gotcha. Um, 
Well, here's the, here's the thing. You're looking at at it as if you look at for a division of different branches and units, you're not going to find it because if you look, you have to look at the SS in this sense. You have the Waffen SS, the armed Waffen SS that was fighting on the front with the tanks and the guns and planes, uh, and had special assignments. Those are not necessarily the ones you're looking at here. You need to look at the the actual SS as an organization that will come closer to uh, comparison to a CIA or, or FBI or NSA network with compartmentalized individual units uh, that has nothing to do with each other. The guy doesn't know what the guy in the office next to him is doing. They all have their special projects and they're all compartmentalized. They're all uh, decentralized. So if there was, like for instance, the, the unit that was uh, the Postal Service guys that was assigned to set up the cyclotron assigned to the SS had never seen the insignias before. So now we're looking at a subunit of the SS that, well, we, there's a lot of them and we don't exactly know who they were. Uh, and the insignia doesn't ring any bells. I, I looked it up, I tried to look around because Eurek sent me one and Again, now we're looking at many year old memories of from the from the eighties of uh, recollection of an SS insignia. That, but at least it wasn't a mainstream uh, Das Reich or or something that was easily rememberable. It was another um, a branch, and I'm thinking there are for some of these special projects they were overseen by smaller units, where some of them could easily have stayed behind. Also, it will be an easier for them to be off the books. Every one of the Waffen SS with a blood group tattoo, well, there's lots of paper trails where they were and what they were doing. Uh, the, the camp guards, well, they're again, documentation, payroll, and so on. If you are working on a speak, uh, secrets uh, project, uh, looking, look at all the black, uh, black bank operation projects. Look at Groom Lake. Uh, it's not like they, they show up with a with a pay stub. See, I got paid from Area 51 for 25 years. Uh, look at what they did to. Um, oh yeah. I don't I don't remember her name. The the scientist that uh, that came out and claimed he saw UFOs and things and went there, and all of a sudden they they backtracked and said no, he never went to this university. He never did this. He never worked for these. No, or those. Yet people actually interesting enough, my my composer uh, knew him, and I can't. Um, it will come to me. And um, but look how easy it was to cover the uh, cover up his existence. And this was, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Bob Lazar, thank you. Uh, that's why I love this because I don't know. Just, exactly. Lady, why do you know these things um, as well? Um, anyway, yes, my composer, he knew him and the people he worked with before uh, Gruden Lake and said, yeah, he worked here. He, no, he wasn't a janitor and so on and so forth. So it's not that hard. And especially in, in, uh, in the 30s and the 40s and during the war, if you're in a black project to disappear and to cover up, if you're not a high profile flyer, like a Kamler or a Himmler or people that you, that will be recognized, um, you, you, you're looking at individuals that are easy to blend in and disappear. Um, although one of the SS officers that I was told of who lived out there for the rest of his life watching over this area, he did have a blood group too, too because uh, Alex's friend is a nurse and she took care of him once and saw it. So why would an SS man remain in the area of the Lisa for the rest of his life? Um, there's also a story of how decades after the war, the Polish started destroying the German graves and just literally just destroying them and build, not even for, for development, just to destroy them, get rid of them, uh, to, to eradicate all signs of German influence in that area, which is also dead soldiers and so on and so forth. So yes, um, it wouldn't make, on top of my head, it would make perfect sense to have a organization watch over secrets that you buried even if you can't retrieve them at least you can 
make sure that no one else does or gets to them, or you can report back if somebody does. And the same thing could be in um, could be said for for Yulnastov, uh, where well something is hiding out those ground because all these people who saw large uh, sites underground. Well, they didn't see that they didn't make all these statements for from from nowhere, so it must have been there. And again, if you can, and this must have been an organized dig because, like like you've seen, and I've seen, I haven't I haven't put them in the episode yet because I don't know if uh, if I'm allowed to use them because I can't figure out who owns them. Uh, prisoner testimony from some of the prisoners that worked at uh, at the Lisa sites that then ended up in. Uh, in uh, Ibensee, in the camp there towards the end of the war. There's interviews with them. And I've seen a lot of the interviews with these guys. And I kind of want to show you because there's two things that are striking. One of them is that the prisoners working on these sites were constantly moved around. They were told, uh, said to you, you dig here. And then they had no idea of bigger picture of what was going on anywhere else. Some were sent, uh, went in the middle of the night to, to dig places night after night after night and so they had little idea and if you keep your prisoners kind of said not, not even segregated but you keep them in in complete darkness of what you're doing if you hire have, have somebody dig a tunnel and big build a bunker they don't necessarily have to know where or how because they know they, well they don't have to they're not walking there they don't generally know exactly where they were because they were brought there and if they were the, the way they were, they could have been brought there. It, it was all deliberately set up so that even the prisoners survived, they would have no idea exactly what they were doing, where they were doing it. Plus the ones that were brought in on outside the concentration camp system that we don't know of could have been disposed of after their work was done because no one knew they were there. Uh, so we don't even know where to look at them. That is one uh, statement of uh, of the prisoners that, that I would love to show you guys. Another one is interesting because we keep being told how, uh, I, I, I'm not entirely sure if this is related or not, but a lot of these prisoners who are working in these places got a lot more medical care that we would generally believe or think of the concentration camp system. Well, been told, well, you can't work. Uh, well, if you can't work, yes, you, you're in trouble. Some of them had leg, hurt their legs to the point. There was one story. His brother was uh, destroyed his leg in, in an accident. He had the leg amputated. They put him in the hospital. They took care of him. Then the doctors amputated his leg, and and uh, and, and slowly healed him. And I'm I, I, I'm listening to them. I don't understand what this is. Brother telling the story, and I'm wondering why. Uh, if everything we've been said and done is true, why are they babying this guy who obviously will never go out and pick rock again uh, to care for him? Uh, if if everything was the way we've been told, why didn't they just dispose of him? Um, because now he's certainly an, ex an expense. So it's just, just strange things just happen that doesn't make sense if you look at this from the uh, from the perspective of what we've been told. Um, uh, I don't remember. There's quite a few. You've probably seen them there, and then a lot of them are online, and they're very interesting. But a, a lot, one thing that really, yes, barbecue at Mets. Yes, we must. I told one of the uh, Uber rich guys at the gym that I'm, we're selling all his Ferraris and buying that Ford. Um, he didn't say no, so I'm gonna go pick up the keys from him now, Dan. Um, oh, I gotta go back to Mets, and damn, it better not be raining or snowing this time. But it was just, it was just when you ask, when you see the interviews with these prisoners, and you know the guys asking or asking, trying to find out what actually happened, what were you doing, what were they having you do, and some of the interviews, you just see the prisoners avoiding that question altogether. And this is, they're old men now. This is years, 20, 30, 40 years, 40 at least years after the war. And they are deliberately just not answering the question. Looking at it, I keep looking at these guys 
And I'm looking I'm like, you don't want to talk about this. You understand the question because they speak perfectly English or some of them were in Polish and translated. But these guys spoke perfectly English and they, you know, they understood the question, but they just kept avoiding it, talking about something else. It is like the old TV show, uh, Yes, Prime Minister, which is a great British sitcom that's very old and really good, um, where the uh, the prime minister told his assistant like the press interview is not done under oath you make a statement that you want and somebody asks you a question you don't want to answer you make another statement that you want to give and that's how you avoid uh, answering questions you say something you just don't answer the question you make a statement and that's what these guys were doing and uh, it just it just struck me as can they still be afraid of what they saw or is there that that's kind of what I'm thinking. It it just seemed to me that 40 years after, you still don't want to talk about this. Um, it was just it was it was strange. I mean, it it now these guys were pretty clear on. They, they seemed okay. They 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 weren't breaking down or anything. They, they were just talking about their life and they were talking about death and 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 concentration camps and they were talking freely about everything. But when asked, so what were you actually doing or what were they doing? At, at this tunnel and Lisa, they just shifted gears into something else. Uh, it was it was very very strange. Um, I think uh, Kristloff owns some of the rights to that. I'm going to see if I can, from a psychological point of view, break those down because it's just it's just strange. And or, again, possibly they couldn't answer the question because they didn't know. But it didn't. They didn't say, I don't know. I only saw my little part of the world. It was it was a deliberate uh, left turn away from the question. Um, if you ask me a question, I don't know. I don't know. Um, or make something up that there's just it, it was just it just struck me as weird. It was just a sixth sense. This looks weird. Um, yeah. Uh, no super chat. I don't know. I'm I'm looking at this through. Uh, I'm looking at this through StreamYard. I don't know what YouTube has done. <laughs> I have no idea what these guys are doing. Um, truly, I have no idea. I don't know. I try not to be in charge. Oh, uh, really? Well, Uh, I'm just taking a look at that. Uh, I don't have anything that says it's not possible, but I don't. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Possibly, maybe, sort of. Did that work? Anyway, we will not. Damn it, now I'm hearing myself talk. I hate that. Be quiet. There you go. Um, I don't know. Meanwhile, let's do what we're doing. Um, hey, uh, Denmark, how, how are we doing on, on restaurants and Danish food? I, I need to go home and eat Danish food. Um, just a curious, uh, question. God, let's leave and clueless. I like that name. Um, many of the camp inmates weren't European industry. Yeah. Well, that's another interest. There, there's a lot of interesting things going on in, in, in relating to, to the work system. I'm kind of hoping that when I am back out at, at Bekristal, I can sit down with the guys at, uh, at the museum, outstanding, at the museum in, uh, in Großhosen and talk a little bit about the different tiers of prisoners and the money that was made and how it was made. And I'll compare it to how the life of minimum wage. Um, Oh no, did I say that? Uh, 
Outstanding. Even better. Uh, well, so so is it here, except it... Never mind. We can't have that conversation. Then we'll definitely go in trouble. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. Coffee need... Oh, God, yes. Do I look like I need coffee yet? I was worried about it. It's been a couple of long days of work. And I've been working on a, uh, an episode on a Danish fort that I really like. And I really like the guys there, so I, I wanted to, went a little extra, uh, try to find the uh, find the, the correct pictures that matched. And uh, Kelabau. Um, well, the Kelabau system was really interesting because that was the first of General Kamla's tunnel systems uh, for underground factories. Uh, after that, you had the Bergkristall, which was this huge finished tunnel system. But Kelabau was the first uh, that he constructed where industry moved in. And then you had Großhosen was, was constructed by the SS as a labor camp and stone quarry. But a lot of those prisons were used to build uh, this, the Kelabau system and the Bergkristall system. I, I, half stuff from there I just haven't gotten there yet and there's a really good reason for it that I really can't tell you until October 30th uh, if I get to go otherwise we're just gonna have the chance it because there, there's a whole lot of politicking going on in order to get in but uh, the test system for all these underground production facilities was the Kelabau which was uh, in Linz right next to the Bergkristall was what built kilometer away um no no one and you're absolutely right nobody talks about the kettlebell system uh very few people talk about the back hassle system it doesn't help that they just filled in 70 percent of it uh to support the ground and they don't like to talk about it out in austria they really don't like to talk about it the kettlebell system like I said, it, it, it was the first, and what was done there, we know some of the things that was built at Bergkristall. Uh, although when you when you're there, if you look at the museum, there's not going. There's no photos that was taken after the war. All the machinery, all the technology, and why is it highly radioactive? Just throwing it out there. And Kelabau being having been there first would be an obvious site for that as well. I I reached out. Uh, to one of them told me I was flooded now and um, access to it is just as hard as Bergkristall. There is one entrance, uh, locked, gated, guarded, camera. Um, so you have to get permission to get in, uh, of course. And, and to me, like, it really doesn't matter because everything that of, of, of historical value has been removed years ago. So it's not like you're going to go in there and find a lump of uranium or, or something. But uh, still, it will be good to see to get an indication. And they're doing a heck of a job keeping people out. Uh, radio radiation, and it is radioactive. I stood outside with my guy counter just to the air coming out. It is. Uh, Kelabau isn't. So Kelabau, okay, then that's flooded. So... We'll, we'll see. Well, we, we shall see. Uh, I am going to very diligently and persistently work with uh, the guys at Gols Olsen who have currently invited me to come in and see it on the tour, uh, Bekistan, if they open it up on the 29th, which we are hoping they're doing. Um, and then I'm going to try to reach out to the organization that handles the entrance to Kelabau. <sighs> But there's other things that took place out in Linz, not the fact that uh, Hitler enjoyed it there, but there's also some, there I heard rumors of uh, nuclear detonation tests there as well. Uh, but so far I only heard them from one person. He very trustworthy because he runs one of the memorial, the memorial um, for Gusen. So I absolutely, I, I have no reason to distrust that. Um, hey, I'm, I'm, Oh, wetsuit that denotes cold water. I prefer open water, but I don't mind diving in it. Same thing in, in uh, the Dua Middelbau. I am trying very much to see if I can get permission to dive 
in uh, in those tunnels there as well. And uh, yeah, I do dive. And yes, I most definitely want a uh, a uh, dive master with me who also knows what he's doing, or who knows somebody smarter than me. Um, on tunnel tunnel diving is 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 a scary thing, but it's clear water from what I can understand, and it's definitely worth uh, investigating under or above water. I don't care. Let's just go because we we got to document this. Uh, before somebody does something stupid and we can never go there again. Um, oh, hang on. Um, behind again. Welcome all from Poland. Yay. Um, interesting. You say, we always say, well, the government knows what the truth is. Who? Who's the government? Who in the government? Because guaranteed the, bureau the bureaucrats that are running the government, they probably don't know. A few of the seniors might. Uh, some of the new appointees, they probably don't either because they haven't been read into it because they don't need to know. So now you have a hand-me-down within intelligence services of information, possibly. Um, if you classify something in 1945, you're the CIC, you're the Army, uh, you're the Army Intelligence Gathering, you are become, you're the OSS, you become the CIA. So in the 40s, you classify something. Well, you're dead now. Who did you hand this over to? Is it an active classification of technology that is still being researched on? Which means the technology went on to a different branch and was researched on, and that was classified, but more people will be working on it. If it was just bottled up somewhere in Germany and you only have the paper trail in America and maybe some boxes of stuff, where did it go? And was that handed over or was that eventually boxes that was locked in a room somewhere and forgotten about? Something that could have been declassified, a lot of this could have been declassified a long time ago, but nobody, again, it takes there's a lot of it. There's tons and tons of documents and boxes still unopened. So who's going to go through them? and why and when. I mean, idiots like me, if I can actually find enough time and money to go out and go to this place time and time, day after day after day, and look through these boxes and have permission to look through these boxes. Because you don't, they didn't just let you into a room full of old papers. You get one box at a time. But these are mostly boxes that have been gone through. Where are the ones that haven't, that was brought over and locked up somewhere in some military base? And who handed over the information? And to whom? So when we know, if you asked anybody in the, well, say, uh, current or, or, or the last uh, administration, oh, by the way, uh, did anybody read you into the German special projects of World War II? No one probably did, because why would they? Uh, first of all, no one in intelligence is going to tell anybody anything unless they have to or there's a reason to. Uh, so what we're trying to do why, by coming out with all the auxiliary information here, all the circumstantial information, is creating a general national, a general public wish to know. So if there's enough public wish to know and pressure, and that's why I would love to get one of the networks on board um, in any which way, just to lend more pressure for these guys to actually go open the boxes, take the time to go look. And I think that's that's where a lot of the problems are, is we just can't get to look. One thing is what was actually classified. Another thing is all the other stuff that just nobody bothered to take the time. And of course, it also costs money because you have to pay people for doing stuff, for classifying things. And if nobody's asking, and we can ask, what is the catch 22? I need to see uh, the documents written by this guy. Okay, what are the numbers of the documents? You don't know because you don't even know if the document exists. I put FOIA requests for documents I did not don't know I don't know if they exist I am assuming and guessing that certain documents exist so I just put a FOIA for them I have no idea <laughs> and sometimes they come back well we don't know sometimes they send me pictures of children surrendering to the Americans I don't ask I still don't know uh, room 5412 very internal here. Um, Got to give me a little bit more, <laughs> like an address. Uh, Vatican records. Yeah, okay. I think there's a bigger chance I'm going to get into the CIA records than the Vatican's. 
Um, hollandaise. Why are we talking about sauce? Uh, ooh, I'm hungry. Ex Benedict, yes. Um, I think that, uh, Bruce, that is something, some of that is stories that has been handed down between prisoners uh, and guards because, well, there's one other, here, a lot of hearsay, a lot of probability, people that have disappeared into holes, but there are one thing that I heard, and that is, again, unverified, because it's really, really, really hard to verify, um, that there were a lot of sick prisoners in a cave uh, alongside radiation, and they were found by the Americans, who then sealed them up after the war, and thereby killing them all for a number for a number of reasons uh, and if it turns out that uh, the american military or intelligence took an active part again here's a an active part in 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 killing these victims to keep a nuclear secret well that would be a good reason why they don't want to talk about it but again it, it is it's unverified it is stories that exist and this is out of germany this is uh, in some of the places closer to Jonastal where I heard this. Um, and to what extent will, well, would, well, will, we, they, us, go to, to keep an explosive secret like that? And that's, that's scary. Um, the Black Vault with John Greenwald. Um, okay. I will make a note of that because I did not know him. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, apparently they did work on some sort of array that would uh, kill rats. I think the Japanese were working on the same thing. Um, problem was it was very large and cumbersome and took an enormous amount, uh, amount of electricity which was a problem. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, anytime you see documents or information or websites online that there is a possibility that you could foresee that the powers that be or will be do not like, uh, screenshot them, save them, download them, record them. And if you can't do any of those things, send it to me and I'll do it. Uh, because it's safe on your hard drive that's backed up in a Faraday cave, in a fire safe, maybe, maybe, or print it out, or just, there's information that, that are disappearing every day, and that is, um, that, that is a very, that is a big problem, uh, unless somebody starts coming up with a parallel internet, which I could actually see as something that might happen, the same thing on parallel YouTube, um, it's got to be known and have enough funding and have people who are determined to keep freedom free, and, a lot of the, it, there's a very interesting report written of what actually killed prisoners in, in, uh, in the labor camps. Uh, the, yeah, I, I, I figured it is. Um, uh, no, the ray was, was something else. I haven't looked into it. Uh, I don't, I think more electricity or plasma or something. Um, the prisoners that were, it was interesting. There was a, a report made by a German historian that I kind of think I want to get on here, it's just to get myself in more trouble, about where in the camp system the majority of the prisoners died. Did they die at the work site? Did they die in the transport? Did they die in marches and trains, or in the camps, or in the barracks, or, or, or how, what, and where, and who? And it turned out that the vast majority of the prisoners who died did not die at the hands of the SS at the work site, or they died at the hands of the capos at the campsites or in the, within the barrack area. Um, and it, it is, it's, very, very, it's very well documented uh, from, from what I can see. And it's, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting study that I've never seen any, anyone do before. And he also cited several of the, of the Kamla locations uh, where apparently 
civilian city civilian workers worked alongside of camp prisoners um, so on the same floors um, doing things it, it's it's it is an interesting it's an interesting study but I could also see why people don't want to downplay that because that also means that a lot of the prisoners that were killed were killed by generally their own um, by the capos which seemed to be what this report bears out it was interesting because I kind of want to get him on this uh, I could also see why uh, I get in trouble for that but I'm just curious what he found because it's, it's a very long and very detailed uh, German report that is translated I'll see if I could figure out download it and put it on my uh, on my account here uh, really usually be rising <laughs> Okay, what am I getting? Um, well, maybe, apparently, well, I don't know why the Polish government doesn't want to know. I think the Polish government doesn't want to know any more than uh, the Czech or the Austrian or the German government want to know. I don't exactly understand why the Poles are not more of interest. However, maybe they are. Maybe they've done their investigations and close their holes and they know what they need to know i think that's quite largely that they actually uh, i think they everyone who had possession of these places they did their investigation they know what they need to know they just have decided we don't need to know um the kachin uh, massacre is, is a prime example of something that is, is a major problem uh historically because in the nuremberg trials the Germans were blamed and sentenced for the Kachin massacre and a whole lot of other things. And based on the Nuremberg trials, a whole lot of laws have been passed in European countries. So now you have laws that are based on judgments that are false. Uh, which mean, And that is how the, the Nuremberg trials in World War II is actively hurting us today. There are uh, things you cannot say and cannot do based on wrongful judgments that have since been proved to be wrongful, of course. I'm not talking about all of them, I'm just talking about now the Catherine Massacre was the one. Um, I always wanted to I always wanted to retry the Nuremberg trials with all information available to all sides and just see where the chips land. But that's just that's just me. Uh, it would take a whole lot of smarter people and archivists and researchers than me. Um, but it, it I would film it. Uh, hang on. Um, uh, HB not enough. Uh, we're not talking about. We're not talking about the Gotto meltdown. Are we? Yes, we are. Aren't we? We, we, I, I think we're talking about the new, the Gutto uh, reactor where the core started melting down. They lifted out and sat it down next to the. Yeah, that was that was Deepness reactor. Um, or less, Opa Doppel, he had one of his own. Uh, remind me. I'm like Kelly Bundy. I can only contain so much memory. I'm surprised that's still on the air. Um, uh, are you guys arguing again without me? Um, all right. Um, there's a conversation that I would love to have, but we're not going to have it in public because then we won't be having any more. Um, bunker project called uh, Vulcan. Any further information? I don't have any information. YouTube user. Are you called YouTube user or am I just not being able to see your name? Uh, send me something on that because for some reason that doesn't ring a bell at all. There was like 30 tons of documents that was taken away. Deep knows G one to three. Yeah, that's what. Hmm. 
Yeah, I saw I saw T thirty four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're supposed to derail. It's a free country. Oh no, wait. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I love it when when people they write all sorts of. Uh, well, not all, but but some people will write something very unpolite, and I will delete their comments in the in hope that this is not a democracy. This is my YouTube channel, and you're not going to call me names in public, bastard. Uh, <laughs> I know. Uh, anyway, um, it it does. All right. Well, let's see. Somebody sent me a very interesting. Um, Hmm. Interesting. Sorry, I'm just looking up. Really? Um, I get nothing. I right off, of course. Hmm. I'm curious. I I never search on Google. I do DuckDuckGo. Underwater demolition team. What the hell? Um, all right, let uh, let me dig into that one and find out where where and what that is. There's a, like I said, there's tons and tons of projects that uh, I haven't even heard of because it's made right turns to the left. Um, seriously, seriously. Hang on, we can uh, fix this immediately. You must be kidding. <laughs> so we get spammed on a chat about World War II? You must be kidding. Uh, yeah, I know, I saw. <laughs> oh, it sort of reminds me of back in the, uh, back when uh, they faxed the uh, African uh, fraud scam of um oh no don't worry about it no, no, no. <laughs> that becomes a numbers game and that that that's just th there's a lot of different numbers that doesn't add up in any which direction so i could see why he would why he would think that but it's 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 a it's a long conversation and someone will get horribly uh, uh lingerie crack upright pull first um so yeah no i'm, I'm with you uh scarecrow shells us australia using the military bombs and japanese bombs yes i heard something about that as well um well you gotta remember war is a wonderful medium to test out new technology and since everybody seems to always make money on war let's test everything we can while we still have a war going and i don't see world war ii being any different than um than the Vietnam War and the, the current whatever that is classified as today that we are doing. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm pissed off that we left all our gear behind, but at least I'm glad we got our guys back home. Um, <clears throat> and torpedo for shocks today. I told you, I know somebody that's like 40. Yes. Um, we're back to the diving part because I really, really, really want to go diving somewhere near the uh, their torpedo test sites. Um, there must have been one or two they forgot to pull up after testing them. But that's going to be a summer, late summer dive because that's some pretty cold water from what I remember. Diving is nice if it's warm and you can see what you're doing. Um, but yes, some of the torpedo test sites would be really interesting. Uh, new bodies. Mm, no, I have not. I I gave up trying to figure out what's <laughs> right. I, I tried. I I gave up trying to figure out what we're doing today because it's not as interesting as it was we did back then. Apparently, or we as a world. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I didn't do it. I was not there. Um. <clears throat> Uh, 
No, Black Vault was just mentioned to me. Um, there's way too many things I do not know. And that's why I have you guys to give me a hints and notes for things I need to um, look up. <laughs> yeah, the water's outside pretty much. I, I wanted to get a boat out to the little island out there. Um, again, last time, it, it, it like everything, like everything else, turns into um, like turn time and money. Um, high jump is so many. Inter We're gonna back and talk about high jump. Um, we did three hours on high jump. Uh, me and Drac. But yeah, they're, they're, I, I'm hoping to go see my buddy uh, Conan from Game of Thrones in Manila and go diving. He's got a dive buddy out there, and I really want to go diving on some of the wrecks and the Japanese wrecks out there, including uh, some of the some of the fortifications that the Japanese built, including the the, the, the research. I'm not going to go look for the Japanese gold because I'm not going to find it. Um, just saying. Uh, did I go look at the crater south of it? No, my wolf's lair visit was sort of spontaneous. Oh, I have a day waiting for this other thing. So let me just drive through and see what I can see. I am going back there. And I do have uh, one of the locals uh, that uh, somebody knows that area much. I was never, I never really studied the wolf's lair or what happened up there uh, in particular. I mean, I'm when I was 50 kilometers away. Yeah, I'll, of course, I want to want to see it. Um, and uh, I had no idea how expensive that bus ride was going to be. But there's, it's, it's an interesting area because more things are not as known as I thought. I thought it was pretty straightforward. I, I'm not, nothing in relating to to battles or to special research took place there. But still, it's a, it's a very, very interesting um, no, it's not, Dave. Um, it's a very fascinating area where so much happened that sort of kind of was grew together. And uh, I really hope that they reopen at Turkin, but they, they have a, a flu issue up there where they couldn't be open. But it is an area, a lot of, a lot of woods, a lot of forest, a lot of things that if you don't have somebody with you, there's also the SS ammunition tunnels up there that I'm definitely going to go see um, because somebody wrote me said you shouldn't go in there it's dangerous so well, send me an invitation will you so I'm definitely going to go there and but I'm going to bring uh, one of the cool guys up there who knows where everything is because you really need a, a guide in an area like that because you're not just going to stumble onto what you're looking for um, I chased down a bus driver and asked him Send me to the railway station, <laughs> um, <clears throat> which is a nice railway station. But uh, Operation Shower Death, I have not. Uh, sounds like an interesting movie. Ah, yeah, they have been. I mean, everybody's been diving on these things forever. It's just shipwreck diving in clear water. It's, it's a lot more fun than, than the Baltic's cold, freezing, dark water. Um, yeah. well, I, I always bring my hard hat and I always leave it in my car. Um, and I got to go to Belgium. There's, uh, there's a couple of places I really want to see. And of course, one of them is only accessible once a year. I mean, what? <laughs> like most of these plays are run by historians who do it voluntarily on their time off, and then some of them I've done by or taken care of by by older retired people who theoretically should have more than one day a year to let people in their fortress. Damn it, truck! Exactly, that's where I want to go. Um, yes, yes, uh, agreed. Uh, oh yes. Oh, a lot of oh, if if there there uh, uncle, there's there are videos from uh, from uh, Libya and I'm possibly no, um, not Libya from 
well, all right, coffee's out. Um, the Middle East, where you see guys fighting today with STG 44s that they found up and dug up and cleaned up from the war. There's a lot of uh, German, the Germans send a bunch of weapons to the various Middle Eastern countries and hoping they'll rise up against the British and be successful. And a lot of these was dug and hidden and you know everybody finds something and they hide in the backyard and then they, you know, they take granddad's old STG and go, go freedom fight today. So you still see a lot of the German weaponry that is being used by uh, by the the guys fighting in the Middle East, uh, Syria. I believe there's a clip on YouTube where somebody is um, is uh, using SG SGGs, and I'm I'm just curious. So they must. That's why you still can. Um, someone still makes uh, ammunition for them, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, definitely. And dive on low time. Yeah, that, yeah. But if we're if we're somewhere really deep or some, I would love to dive in Norway too. But oh, goddamn cold! Uh, <laughs> I don't like cold. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, uh, and, and in Syria, there's also three Sturmgeschütz that was the the sitting in in somewhere in in somewhere museum museum or military place that were. Oh, let me see. What was their story? They were the last model Sturmgeschütz. They were taken by the French after the war. All of these German tanks are put in in, uh, in in various storage places. A lot of those were then sold on to the Middle East, and these ended up uh, with the Egyptians and got shot up. Some of them, most of them got shot up by the Israelis, and then some of them, they got refurbished new engines, and then they were sent to Syria, where some of them still exist. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure I will be not be allowed to go to Syria and go play with one of them, but it would be interesting. And if uh, somebody would, would just make sure they're taken care of, because those are the last three upgraded in every way Sturmgeschütz that exist that are sitting in Syria. So yeah, there's a lot of that stuff sitting down there. Also sitting in the, a lot of it was in use during the Egyptian Israeli war where uh, you had you basically had Shermans and German tanks uh, fighting off against each other on opposing sides, just like World War II, but some years after the war, which was interesting. Um, the biggest U.S. surrender, yeah, it didn't. It uh, wasn't that. Are you talk um, the biggest? Are you talking about the Japanese four hundreds, or are you talking about the? Uh, Actually, that's an interesting thing. What happened to U two three five, U two three four? That after it surrendered Norfolk, where's the boat? What actually happened? I don't know if it's on display somewhere. It, I mean, we got a pristine boat over over here in the end of the war. You would think it would end up in a museum, but I don't know. Uh, uh, so again, <laughs> well, yeah, I'm. I, you, you know, if I say I want to go to Syria and do a documentary on these three tanks and I'm going to play with them, I'm, I'm sure Assad will probably let me in. I'm just not sure if the State Department will let me back in here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's somewhere, somewhere down the line of that, I'll, I'll get in trouble. Somebody would probably complain. Um, well, maybe, I don't know. Uh, I would love to. I would love to go to North Korea, to the place where the Japanese supposedly tested a nuclear bomb a few days before the war ended. Uh, pretty sure that's not going to happen until North Korea is no longer North Korea. And I, of course, also don't know um, how much of that was um, destroyed, refurbished. And again, it's been seventy-five years. But it will be interesting to see uh, what there is there. Uh, outstanding. Uh, yeah, I saw. I, I saw. Uh, I would come to come by again. Outstanding. Um, I really want to go see if his if if that body is there under that name that I was given. Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm not going to go to North Korea and look for anything. Um, I, that's one country I'll be perfectly fine if it was run by McDonald's and Starbucks. Uh, <laughs> Um, <clears throat> yes, uh, yeah, the return trip. Yeah, somebody would probably want to ask me questions coming in and coming out. 
um, I guess thigh or something. Um, no, they didn't. Nobody tells the truth. That's pretty simple. And that's what we're trying to figure out, sort out what is the truth, what is propaganda, what is pre-war propaganda, what is during war propaganda, what is after war cover-ups. And after so long, can we just please figure it all out for the sake of history? Um, uh, oh, USS Torpedo Trial 94. Oh, they sunk it. Oh, Jesus. Of course they did. Thanks. Why, why, why did we, with so much stuff we destroyed that will, like the, like the Japanese, the huge giant submarines, we didn't want to give the Russians one and we sank him. Why? Just, just tell them, no. It drives me crazy to see what, uh, um, um, well, uh, RKB, there's another episode and there's something else to it. Um, that I will get to within the next few weeks. Um, you will see. It's not that simple. It's actually really, really complicated and really, really weird. Um, from what I understand, a red house and a white house, which buildings are no longer there, from what I have been uh, made to understand. Um, yeah, no kidding. Uh, oh, uh, we should. But if we all meet there and we put it out on social media, would it really be a secret meeting? Um, mm, yes. I mean, the French, uh, the, yeah. We, I know, but can't we blow up shit there's enough of? Why do we blow up stuff that's really, really one in, in a lifetime of? Just, uh, ugh. Um, I mean, nothing. Don't don't get don't get me wrong. We're we are not doing anything that everyone else hasn't also done. I mean, the uh, it's interesting with it with the Nazi burning of books. Nobody can really sort of figure out who orchestrated or ordered it, uh, except some local student organization. Um, and then you have hanger-ons that just decided that they are going to take part and outdo somebody else and outdo somebody else and then something gets destroyed uh even if it's not even an official uh top-down edict everybody destroyed stuff that was once off uh but it's just uh do we have a Hor oh the horton in uh in the smithsonian <laughs> i want to go i i have to go to the smithsonian to mock them i just don't want to go there with um um I did. I, I spoke with Crystal fucking uh, two days ago. Uh, that was really positive. I'm really looking forward to and And she wrote some great books and does some great research. I'm really looking forward to um, to, to meet her out in, in Germany. Uh, like, I, like I told her, she, she seems to be my kind of crazy. And uh, thumbs up on that. Um, it, it is... Yeah, it, it, that, that whole, whole book burning thing was a weird thing because they wanted, the student organization wanted Goebbels to speak, but he didn't, um, he didn't accept until a week before the event because he really didn't want to commit to that. So it wasn't from his office. It wasn't from Hitler or Himmler's office. It was the student organization that did it. Um, and when he did speak, he agreed to speak. Uh, it was not the usual fire and brimstone, kill all bad people, blah, blah, speech Goebbels usually would do. It was sort of more contained, which is interesting. Um, so, but then, I mean, they, they burnt David, uh, David Irving's books in, in, the, in the 90s in England. Um, and by destroying or deleting information, I mean, doing the same thing. That's why I, li I like books because you can't, uh, she sold me some really interesting images that I, I, yeah, um, I, I am going to, now we just have a little, little show here. Um, and we're just a bunch of people. Uh, I, I will try to convince her to, to sit down and, and actually talk 
uh, talk to all of us. Um, I have, but I will uh, again. Uh, I mean, how much schnitzel and beer can a guy buy a girl to get her to be on his show? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they did. They really, really did. And even if you listen to his speeches over time, he wasn't really saying or doing anything bad until he started getting getting torpedoed and got more and more angry and bitter and i i, I get that and it's it's <sighs> no no even information we don't like shouldn't be burned everything sh i always said information should be something that everybody needs to get and then make up their own mind and as long as you agree with me you won't be killed but here's the information Oh, <clears throat> so now <laughs> oh, this is more fun for me. Um, yeah, I mean it is, but like the, we need we need books. We don't need digital books. One of you guys sent me a digital book, um, and I have it, and I can't write thank you because I can't see who sent it. It was a month ago. Just but well, thank you. <laughs> Uh, I, I sometimes get get mail in in the mail, and uh, or books and suggestions and papers in, in the hard mail, but you don't write who it's from. Uh, thank you. <laughs> um, just 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 saying if I if I don't respond within a year it's because I I couldn't determine where it came from. Um, I mean, I, 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 the, the, the mo most I can, I can go with is using uh, used newspapers for kindling for the fireplace. Just, um, but yeah, that, that's, that's why I like physical books to read as opposed to websites, because it doesn't take that much technology to alter text in a website or delete it outright. A, a book sitting on my shelf, like I said, all, all the books that are sitting on my shelf in my, my very storage is protected by Smith & Wesson. So, um, and I can underline them, and I can do donkey ears, I can do all those horrible things. Um, yes. Um, you know, that's the weird thing, Wolf, about uh, the book The Hidden Nazi. He, and I, I, I have to reach out to him. I, I, I chat with, with one, of the, um, one of the authors. And I, I really kind of want to get him on with with an interview and talk about him, I talk about uh, talk to him. There's just a few things about that book that really gets to me. But one of them is throughout the entire book, he builds spent the whole book building the case that Kamala did a deal with the Americans who came here, and then at the very end, he said, "Well, he but he probably died there, and his suicide or whatever." And I mean, you just and the whole book building a case for the opposite, and then it turns, and that just I find that so that was so strange. Um, and then there's the opinions, but that's uh, native training tennis and native training tennis in California. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I know tennis is like golf, best taken with a drink. Um, yeah, one of you guys are making. Uh, oh, you're in the fall. Oh, yeah, that explains it. I, I usually uh, I usually dictate my text messages because I just it's quicker. Uh, problem doing that is usually your phone will hear it wrong and I'll end up declaring war on something, which I, I hey Bangladesh. Um, I I it's so funny because my phone hates me, and obviously it's not an iPhone. Um, of course not. It wouldn't, but. It, it it doesn't seem to ever hear anything or understand anything I say in English. Uh, I installed the Danish, eh? Doesn't really. I I even installed the German, eh? Doesn't really. But if I speak Spanish to it, it'll understand me perfectly. And I haven't even installed the Spanish uh, language program. <laughs> what the hell? Um. <laughs> um so anyway, <clears throat> uh, that's probably not one of them. Yeah. Oh, uh, newspapers. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll just make up our own newspaper. 
we, we should do a historical uh, historical we should it's it's such a it's such a shame that we are so far uh around the world that we can't actually sit down and have a conference uh, where we all show up and, and have all these guys talk. I think there should be, and I, I suggested that to Crystal as well, and she said she tried, but no one, to, to get historians to come, just like they have the they have the UFO conferences, they have all the, uh, where people come and they show and, and, and they talk about their findings. We don't have that for, for World War II or for the, the special projects and programs. Uh, according to, to hers, was because all the historians want to keep their information to themselves and they don't want to show up and share because they want to get their own glory. And I am perfectly happy reporting and crediting everyone else for what they find. To me, I, I, I don't care. I'm not going to be rich or famous for finding anything of the, any of this. I just want us to find collectively the truth. To me, it's not about who finds it as long as it's found and it's reported and we get to hopefully write some of history books just wrongs. So it would be nice to have a, a history summit um, like that. And it would be something I would love to, to, to work in with, with doing tours out there when all this uh, flu stuff is over, but we have to get over so we can actually travel for one. And maybe there should be a North American one or one in Europe for just for logistics. If we can get people to show up, Catching up again. News reporter came by. Whipped cream. Yes, whipped cream. That's why I need. I need to go to Denmark. Need whipped cream, and look at all the fortresses around Copenhagen and, and eat more food. Is Ka uh, Martin is uh, Cafe Noir? Uh, is that still? Does it still exist? They had the best vanilla cream uh, to one of the store we buy. It's just I'm telling you, uh, that vanilla cream. They would not give me the. Um, they would not. Oh damn you back. They would not give me the recipe. Um, bots back. No, I think I got them. Um, yeah, I think I got them. <laughs> <clears throat> what are you guys doing? I'm trying to do it. Uh, anyway, that would be that would be an interesting thing to do, and that's something I would want to do. Um, again, when we can travel, uh, what should you do? Oh, I kind of want, I, I kind of crave Danish Christmas food. I, I can't really explain why. Um, it must be a thing. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. That, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> They'll get that or let people steal my stuff. That's, that's no problem. Copy my material, and upload it. But they can't get a sex bot off my chat. Um, <clears throat> that's one thing I always wonder when I watch some of the YouTube channels on on military or history or Franco-Prussian wars. And given the people that are probably watching that, and they have the algorithm to place the commercials, and I'm trying to figure out why on earth would you think that somebody who was watching a documentary on the Franco-Prussian War, which is probably a middle-aged dude, wants to see commercials for Revlon lipstick? I'm just saying. Um, proof in point of why things don't work. Now, all right, it is not so good. No, I'm talking about the one in uh, the one in uh, in Copenhagen, down on uh, 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 by that square, Spangvin. Uh In the center of Copenhagen, by the Walking Street, there's that two-story cafe called the uh, Cafe Nord, where they had that. Uh, I didn't know there was one in uh, Sunday. If they have vanilla custard, or vanilla cream, I'll be there. Um, all right, you guys. Uh, there will be an episode coming up tomorrow. I am just finishing the intro. And uh, we will have... Uh, the Sarajevo Tunnel. That would be interesting. You don't know, uh, Sniper Alley? I would actually love to go back there. Um, I don't see why. I don't see why not. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm okay with lipstick. I just don't want it on me. Uh, well, well, I don't want to wear it. Let's put it that way. Um, I know that that's. Horribly un, un, uh, 
unwoke of me. However, I just look really silly with lipstick. Anyway, um, yeah, I know. Uh, well, they, they should. Because at least this time we'll get up to, uh, with a little luck, we'll get up to 100,000. I still don't understand how we have 25 million views and only have 100,000 followers. That is the big problem by getting, uh, getting demonetized is uh, that you drop in the algorithm. And then you fewer people see you, and it's just it's just a it's just a tangled, and it shouldn't be it shouldn't be. Um, and I actually have no idea why that other thing went out. Anyway, I am going to go out in the world and do things because I have to finish this episode for you guys, so I can upload it, so you have something to wake up for tomorrow. Um, yeah, it's just a messy thing when you don't when you forget to shave and you put on your lipstick and it gets all. Um, yes, we are kind of. Did you send me the copy? Oh, thanks. <laughs> okay, I didn't. I couldn't see where it was from. Um, anyway, let's. Do, I was going to say let's do this next week, but since next week is going to entail uh, a root canal and dentist visits and crowns and all those other funny things. I don't know how intelligent I will sound towards the end of the week. Also, we have annual muster on base for the weekend, and I will try to work really hard to make sure I get you an episode up that I don't have to narrate too much next week because I might be speaking funny and I'm sure I'm hard enough to understand as it is. Anyway, um, I will see you guys next week. I'll upload an episode for you here in uh, in a few hours, so you have something to wake up for tomorrow, besides coffee. And now I got to go hunt more coffee of my own. And um, <sighs> we'll talk more about pastries. And I hope that I will get out to Europe. Maybe we'll just do a poll, see where everybody is, for my future history conference. Yeah, I know. Yes. <laughs> oh, of, of Lisa, I have about 10 more of this season, then I gotta go out and film some more. And I mean, it's it's never gonna end. And then a million castles. And after this one, we're moving into World War One, and that's gonna be kind of cool. Um, come look on 2020. His grandson is going to crucify me. Um, oh, well, I will see you guys. You have a good weekend. Uh, be good, do something incredibly stupid and funny and dance on the bar tables and send me videos because I'll be working. <laughs>